Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to today's Kendo rant. Uh, right, let's get straight into it. I've got a rant for you today that's straight off my own back. It's not even a, uh, it's not even a question from you guys. It's one that I want to talk about because it's, it's been, it's in the back of my mind for the last few weeks, and uh, I want to get it off my chest. So let's get through the questions first, and then we'll get to that. Um, okay, so it says. Uh, what do you think of the first Q Kendall car who do uh, not see themselves as worthy of a downgrade due to poor physical conditions, despite having the skills needed for achieving the downgrade uh, brackets, and will push the attempt of downgrading until they're in better condition, actively working on bettering themselves? Okay, um, so this is in response to my last video, which was about uh, it was called Eternal IQ, uh, which is about people that intentionally stay at the IQ level or the first Q level so that they can basically just enter the um the tournaments for the q grades and uh win them basically because they're, they're more experienced than everybody uh i mentioned in the video yesterday that it doesn't really work like that anyway and um, people that do that um tend not to have that much success but still um if you are someone doing that you should stop because it kind of sucks um but this is something totally different. Of course, this is somebody that's, this, we're talking now about somebody that's uh, got the first cue and then now they're hesitant to go for, for the first down because they don't feel like their, con their physical condition um, is up to it. Now, it depends on what you mean in terms of physical condition. If you're talking about sort of stamina or because of your, um, I don't know, like your age or something, if you feel like you're a little bit, um, you know, if you're older or something and you feel like you haven't got the kind of stamina to, or the kind of physical ability to uh, compete with younger people, um, I don't think it's that much of a bigger deal but big deal because for your first down grading you, you know you, you don't have to do like 50 attacks in the time you've got um you don't need it to be a, a really um sort of arduous or uh, exhausting practice it should be like a, a correct display of correct kendo and showing the the level of your um understanding of the basics uh frankly the the difference or the gap between iq or first q and first dan um, should not be that big. Uh, it should it should be very very similar. Uh, in Japan, certainly that's how it's uh, sort of considered, um, and that's how it should be considered really. If everywhere else were to take Japan as an example, um, but what you tend to have is I do know that in in other countries um, around the world, sometimes there is a bit of a bigger gap between first Q and first Dan because they want to kind of make that kind of black belt status a thing um but you know it, it shouldn't really be like that kind of first cue or eq is kind of a it's kind of a warm-up or a practice for first dan um you should only really be you know th there shouldn't be a massive difference so once you've got your first cue within a few months you should be able to get your first done um so you know if if you if you're able to get through a kendall practice uh, a regular kendo practice then you should have uh, the physical condition to get through your grading because like I say you shouldn't be doing kakari out there you shouldn't just be going out there and attacking mindless, mindlessly just like 10 or less attacks is enough um, but if you're talking about um, physical condition having potentially changed since you got your EQ for example maybe there's an injury or there's a uh, an accident you had or something like that um, well that's a bit different um, but still like I say if you're able to participate in Kendall, um, then, you know, you should still be able to get through the grading. Um, you know, obviously, let's say, for example, somebody's injured their leg and they're not suddenly not able to do Fumikomi, maybe. Maybe that's the thing. Well, uh, first off, you don't have to do Fumikomi. Um, it's just, obviously, it's, it's the most popular way to do it and it's the best way to do it for um, kind of lots of reasons. But... You know, if if you, it doesn't mean that you're un, it's impossible to pass first down if you if if you're you've got a physical reason for not being able to do something specific, um, so that's that's worth bearing in mind as well. I mean, I'd have to see your kendo exactly, or or you'd be best talking to your your own teacher um, about the advice on that. But you know, if you've got your first cue, then you should be looking towards challenging first down as soon as you can, um, and and it, it's you know you, you don't really want to be sort of trying to put yourself off it um especially not for a reason like physical condition okay um hi andy thanks for this rant i'm really i really like the product name of shinobu uh for that last kendall cell bog set uh thank you very much it's a great bog set as well go and check it out um 
What's the exact meaning of what is the exact meaning of shinobu? Google Translate says endure, which is quite appropriate. Yeah, uh, shinobu it does mean endure um, or to kind of bear with. Uh, it can also mean like conceal or hide, but I've chosen it for the name because yeah, uh, you know it's it's quite a good kendo word because you know you you have to endure a lot of things in kendo. Um, in order to improve it's not all just fun and games uh, there's a lot of things that you have to overcome and and put up with um so yeah i really like it um but yeah like i say it does also mean like uh, conceal or hide or something like that um it's actually uh the word ninja it's the nin from ninja is is shinobu and you might have heard uh the term shinobi uh, I think there was a series of computer games back in the day uh, called Shinobi, actually, um, uh, which featured around a kind of ninja character. Uh, and yeah, Shinobi is a, it's just another reading of the, well, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same word uh, as Shinobu. It's the same kanji in Japanese. Uh, okay, so that's what that means. Uh... As for the Vanguard set, I'm using the Vanguard Kote for around half a year or so, and they're super comfortable, light, and provide good protect protection even from super hard strikes. Uh, one thing that makes it even better is that during cake or your palm leather does not become so soaking wet like I've had with my previous Kote. Great. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 great to hear. I'm really glad that you like the Vanguard Kote. They are fantastic. Um, I would say that, of course, but <laughs> they absolutely are. Everybody that's got them says so. Uh, you can see that the, the, fully five, the whole Vanguard series is fully five-star reviewed uh, on the website. Everyone that's got it loves it um, for reasons, like you said, super comfortable, lightweight, and good protection. Uh, and yeah, on the, on the leather for the palms, uh, that's exactly why I chose that sort of material for it. Lots of our rivals use this sort of micro-punch, like punched leather stuff, um, which I think is a bit like in my experience um, and I have had a lot of experience with it if you know about my work history you'll know that uh, a couple of the places I used to work for often use the stuff so I know about the stuff quite a lot um, I think it's I, I don't think it's a great material for uh, the kote that's why I don't use it in any of the kendo star stuff um, because I don't think it deals with moisture very well and I do think that it wears out far too quickly. Um, so yeah, I don't have that micro punch rubbish on any of our stuff. It's, uh, it's all decent, um, either real leather or synthetic deer leather. So thank you very much for that. Uh, next one, uh, you didn't participate in the Kendall World Championships 2018? Uh, question mark. <laughs> no, I didn't, unfortunately. I'm not, I won't be participating in the World Championships, which is starting tomorrow um, in, uh, in South Korea. Um, I'm kind of really jealous on seeing everyone on Facebook, all my friends from around the world that are on various national teams um, posting their pictures. Uh, I really do wish I was there, but um, I was, I, I did consider trying out for the team again this year, um, even though I am getting a bit long in the tooth. <laughs> uh, but I did consider it, um, but uh, I ultimately decided against it because um one obviously we moved over here for to bring kendo stars offices over here um and that has just gone crazy since we've done that it's absolutely blown up so obviously that's been a lot of a big drain on my time and i wasn't sure if i'd be able to commit to the training that i'd need to um but more importantly as well is that um i'm uh i've got two kids and uh, i'm married of course and uh my wife is japanese and uh, we moved over here uh, sort of October on a kind of semi-permanent basis. My kids are in school um, and it, here, I mean. Uh, so, well, for all intents and purposes, we, we're kind of moving over here uh, for the foreseeable future so that I can uh, organise uh, Kendo Star in Europe properly um, before I move on to other places, which is a plan for the future. Um, and then uh, basically... Um, that requires a, a visa for my wife. She needs to come over here on a visa, um, which we're in the process of still dealing with. So she's actually still in Japan. So I'm, I'm here on my own with the kids, uh, our two kids. So as well as running the business, I'm kind of a single dad at the minute, uh, which is another handful in itself. Um, so of course I couldn't, I couldn't abandon them uh, whilst, I, whilst I, I go off to Korea and, uh, and enter the world championships, uh, not to mention all the training that I would need to do running up to it. Um, so I knew, we knew that it was on the cards. Uh, we knew it was, we knew it was coming. Um, and yeah, kind of, we decided that, uh, it would probably be better for me to, to give it a miss this time. Um, and you know, I'm kind of, 
I'm sort of officially retired from the team. Um, and of course, I, I have thought about making a comeback maybe next time. But I don't know. Uh, I, like I say, I'm no spring chicken. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, next question goes over to the Kendo Show Early Access group. Um, if you're not in that group, get in it. There's a link down below in the description. Um, Hello, uh, I also have a question. I think it's rarely mentioned, uh, or maybe because I'm a beginner, so I haven't learned it yet. Could you please give some tips about what techniques can be used against a door strike? Uh, okay, yeah, um, this is a great question, and it's one that you'll obviously um, have a lot, I think, um, uh, especially for people that are just starting out in Kendo, they often you know, come, at, you know, come up with this question, well, okay, I, I've read about uh, what you can do against Kote or what you could do against men, but what do you do about somebody that's coming to hit the door? Well, um, okay, well, the, there's like a, the, the Kendo instruction book from the Old Japan Kendo Federation. I think that talks about Do Kaishi Men. I don't have it here, but the, I think it talks about Do Kaishi Men, uh, which I think is like a... Uh, a bit of a nonsense waza. I don't think it's a useful waza at all. Uh, now, I'm sure loads of people will come in the comments now and say, oh, I did door kaishi men all the time, and I always get a good door kaishi men. And that, if that works for you, that's cool. Yeah, you know what I mean? Whatever works, man. But um, for me, I don't think that door kaishi men is a, is a great waza because it's... it's uh, it's very different to Kote uh, because it needs a much bigger movement because of where the attack's coming in. Uh, secondly, with somebody that's any good, once they when they come for your door, they're going to be going off this way uh, pretty quickly. So what tends to happen is because it's quite slow, wasn't it? you tend to kind of end up blocking the door and then trying to hit them as they're going past you like this. And uh, I mean, I've never seen somebody really, you know, do that so well. I mean, it, it, it's not totally impossible, but... Um, it's probably more useful against like hickey doors or something like that, but still, mm, I think it's a bit. I think it's a bit risky. I think you, I, you know. Um, another thing, uh, door with chiotoshi men, uh, which is where you kind of strike the door, strike down, and then hit. Um, like mm, that's what's in the what's in the bokuto ni yoru kiyomaza keiko hall. It's kind of semi-useful. I, I guess I do something that's a bit similar, but I don't consider it Dori Chitoshi Man. What I would do is like, uh, oh, my kid's shinai again, is uh, <laughs> when they come to attack, I'd probably block the door just with my shinai here um, at this sort of section, block the door here, uh, and then um, I'd be kind of trying to figure out where they're going to go from there once they've realized that their door hasn't worked. If they're going to stop in the tracks, then from there, block, then I could go for Hiki Man, for example. They're still going to go around this way, um, which most people do because they kind of it, it, the people that hit door in this way like um, kind of should we call it Toby Komi door like just hitting door randomly um, for the most part they there's two two people kind of people that do it one is it comes from semi and they've got you kind of you know they're doing it because they know that they can get your hands up like this uh, in which case you've probably got no chance of doing the ojiwaza <laughs> on it anyway because they're doing it because you're in a position not to do it or you've got the people that just try and whip it out the bag randomly because their other attacks aren't working um and uh yeah uh those sort of people when they do it when they hit they just go off anyway even if they miss so um because they're kind of doing it mindlessly um so you find that even if you're blocked they kind of come this way uh in which case i kind of turn with them and then try and get them when they sort of turn around um so it's yeah it's a kind of tough one um but you know that sort of toby Komi door style waza um you only see it in sort of lower level kendo so much anyway um it, it's not such common waza in uh higher level kendo you tend to see more men nuki door or men kaishi door which of course um, isn't a waza you could do oji waza against because it is itself an oji waza. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my sort of thoughts on that. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much the questions from that group as well um, that haven't been answered. So that's cool. So right, I wanna I wanna rant now uh, freestyle. <laughs> uh, this is um, something that I talk about a lot in my kendo club when I'm teaching. Um, up here in Manchester, um, I talk about Tsuba ZDI. I think Tsuba ZDI is like one of them. I've done a video on this, by the way. Not not this specific topic, but I've talked about Hikiwaza on the Kendo show. So if you go up to the search bar and search the Hikiwaza the Kendo show, whatever, um, have a look at that video as well. Because Hikiwaza and Tsuba, well, Waza from Tsuba ZDI, Kendo from Tsuba ZDI, has got to be the like most under-practiced thing in Kendo. Um, 
considering its frequency in an actual realistic situation. Um, if you watch most high level Shi'i, probably around 40 to 50 percent of the match is spent at Super Zeri'i. So, um, because that's where you end up after Awaza has failed. Um, so, if you don't know how to do Super Zeri'i properly, um, or how to perform Waza from Super Zeri'i, you're effectively wasting like half of your Shi'i. Um, or it's not just a Shi'i either, of course, any sort of Tachi'i. Um, so you have to understand Super Zeri'i properly, um, both how to do actual Super Zeri'i and also Waza from it. But what I want to talk about specifically today is more the actual um, Super Zeri'i. Yeah, if you want to look at Waza from Super Zeri'i, go and look at my Hiki Waza video, so talk about more about that in that. But um, I'm going to talk a little bit from uh, this book. This is the the grading and answer, uh, grading questions and answers book uh, that you can get in Japan. Um, when you do a Dan grade, um, most most countries are the same, but for most part, when you do a Dan grade, there's a written paper, and in Japan, you're expected to um, up to fifth Dan. You're expected to. Uh, Research the questions from this book and provide the exact answers that are written in this book. Okay, um, you're not expected to give your opinion or what you think about something. You're supposed to write the answer that's written in this book. Okay, so everyone goes and buys this book and uh, <laughs> and uh, memorizes the answers from it. So um, here's an example question uh, that I think is cool. It says, um, "Correct Super ZDI, um, please explain." Um, about correct Super Zeri'i and um, what points a uh, teacher should um, consider. So when you're teaching Super Zeri'i, okay? So first it says, um, Super Zeri'i is when um, yourself uh, or your uh, partner uh, uh, makes an attack and um, whether, uh, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it just says when they, when they kind of attack. Um, and the distance becomes very close and the two, the two tsuba, so it, it's it essentially either both of you make an attack or one makes an attack and one blocks or something and an unsuccessful attack happens. And then uh, the distance becomes closer and the tsubas uh, cross. Um, so the, the, the tsuba cross or kind of a, a, a competition between tsuba happens. Um, your own shinai should be slightly to the right, diagonally to the right, and uh, your, your hands should be lowered. Um, you should have power in your abdomen and um, you should uh, protect your center line. Um, and whilst competing at the tsuba, you should um, attempt uh, datotsu. Um, well, you should try and find the uh, opportunity or make the opportunity. Um, it actually says make uh, the opportunity for uh, datotsu or strikes. Okay, uh, that's that's the part about explaining what super zeri is. Okay, so that last part is super important. Okay. Um, you have to try and whilst whilst um, whilst uh, both tsuba are competing, whilst you're both competing at the tsuba, you have to try to make um, opportunities for strikes. Right, that's the important bit. I'll go into the teaching points in a minute. Right, but here's why I want to rant on it. Right, too many people use tsuba zeri as a point of rest. Yeah. You get to Super Zeri Ai, man, like this, okay? And like your fists are rubbing together like this, like this, and you're kind of taking a break. And the problem is, this, this, is, this happens a lot uh, outside of Japan because we don't practice Hikiwaza enough and we're not good enough at Hikiwaza, so we don't feel under threat at Super Zeri Ai. Uh, but when you're at Tsuba Zeri'ai, Tsuba Zeri'ai literally means to compete between the Tsuba, fight between the Tsuba. So you have to re be fighting, you shouldn't have your fists together like this, your Tsuba should be locked together. And you're looking to make the attempt to strike, that's what it says, make the ch opportunity to strike. Okay, so that's what you have to be doing in Tsuba Zeri'ai. That's, um, that's the point of it, that's why it exists. Okay, it's not a chance to rest, uh, it's not a, you know, a sort of thing to just break up the match or something like that. Um, 
so you know when think about this when you're next in Sudazeli, right? You, that it's it's active, it's fighting, it's still fighting, okay? Um, and don't go nuts on me on using the word fighting, okay? I don't want to drag up the sword fighting debate, okay? You're still competing, whatever you want to call it, okay? But you still need to be switched on and active. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the points that teachers need to know when you're teaching um, what you should be teaching people about Super So, number one, says um, the hands should be lowered and the um, there should be power in the abdomen, okay? So you should have a strong sort of lower body. Um, and also a, a kind of straight straight posture. Number two, so that means obviously you shouldn't be relaxed like this, you shouldn't have your hands up like this, and you shouldn't be kind of arched over like this, yeah? Be nice, correct, straight, power in your body, ha hands slightly lower, and this isn't written here, but what's really important is the space here, okay? The space here between your, this space here, it's hard to see on the camera, this here, okay? So here when we're in Chow Chudan, um, when we're in Chudan, we've got this space, when we come to Super Zeli, our hands lower slightly, but we still have space between our body and our hands, and we're not like this, yeah? And um, that's probably really blown out because of my dark jumper, but basically, your hands shouldn't be up against your body, okay? Um, so, number two. Uh, the neck should be straight and um, you should have the, uh, like, strong uh, spirit and feeling uh, towards the opponent and um, you shouldn't lean forward. So the head, the, you shouldn't dip your neck like this. This is a very, uh, very common, like this. Okay, I used to do this a lot actually. Um, when I first moved to Japan, that's the first thing they said to me is like, yeah, you've got your head down like this. It's like, super easy to hit your hikimen. Uh, like this, um, shouldn't be up like this, okay? I should have a, a good posture again, like I said, but you shouldn't be leaning forward this way, okay? Even if you're back straight, you shouldn't be leaning forward and have the good sort of uh, feeling towards your opponent. Um, and then here it says, number three is important. It says uh, the tsuba and tsuba should be competing together. So it makes sure that the tsuba are locked together and not just fists are bumping like this. Yeah, tsuba and tsuba. Number four, the shinai should not be pressed against or touching the uh, partner or the opponent's shoulder. Um, and the, uh, habu, um, the cutting edge of the blade um, should not touch uh, the partner's body, okay? Uh, so you can't be, you sometimes see like this, get to the eye and then rest the shinai on the person's shoulder like this. Okay, you shouldn't, shouldn't really touch them with the, um, with the blade, okay? Uh, sometimes there's techniques you can do that are a bit cheeky, uh, that kind of, you've got to be a bit careful because they just say that you can't like push on their neck. So you can't be like leaning on them like this, but there are a few techniques that you can do that are a bit cheeky, um, like, kind of push a little bit and then hit. Um, but in general, you shouldn't be touching them with the, with the habit, with the, with the blade bit, okay? Uh, number five, um, they sh you shouldn't use too much strength or power. And uh, it says you should also not um, like uh, relax um, or rest during this time, okay? So no resting, that's what I just said. That's what I talked about. Yeah, you have to be looking to make the opportunity. Um, and this is another point here, number six. Um, it says you have to try and make uh, the good technique or separate, okay? So once you get to Super ZEI, you look to make the attack, you look to make the opportunity. If you can't, you look to separate, okay? Um, you don't look to waste time. It's the correct way to do Super ZEI. So, um, I think it's really important to go over these, all right? Uh, I know some of them seem like obvious stuff, but because Super ZDI seems to be really under-practiced, I, I really wanted to kind of talk on it um, and kind of bring these points that this is literally out by the All Japan Kendo Federation, um, and this is, this is what you need to pass your sort of fourth and fifth dan. Um, you know, you need, to, you need to have this in mind. So, um, yeah, I mean, particularly the points about not resting, I think that's super important. You can't use it as a, as a point to relax. And also, you can't, um, 
can't be using too much strength, which lots of people do. They kind of get pushy. Um, and you have to look to make an attack. Yeah, that's the real thing. You have to look to make a strike. Uh, like I said, I've got a video about that, so check that out. But um, Or you have to look to separate. And when you separate, if you're deciding to separate, then you don't do stuff that's like kind of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna separate, man, like this, okay? You do that now in a high school tournament in Japan, it's handsucker. yeah? You have to either, um, it's, it's a really gray area, this, right? Because what's really, you know, like agreeing to separate and what's not, but you have to, in Japan, they have to separate all the way out Okay, before they start to re-engage again, they can't kind of separate to here and then try and hit. Um, in in Japanese high school level shiai, that's that's now hansoku uh, penalty. Okay, they have to actually separate all the way out. Okay, um, essentially they want you to be fighting either from Tsubazeri Ai or from the Chudan um, or whatever other kamai you might use. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so that's uh, that. Um, there was another question I wanted to just double back to, actually. Um, this is turning into a bit of a long video, um, but I did just remember it. Um, <laughs> I did remember it being posted and I didn't actually get round to replying to it and it was a great question. Um, so, uh, now I've ranted on this Super Zeti Eye, I'm gonna answer that last question and then I'm gonna go, right? Because I know this is a super long video. Um, <laughs> uh, but here we go, let's do it. Um, it was posted in the, the Kendo Show Early Access group, um, so I'm just going back to it, and it says, it's a video from the, it says the 55th Todof Ken Ishujiai, uh, Ishujiai Naginata versus Kendo. Uh, okay. Um, never heard of this tournament. Uh, never heard of it at all. Um, it's basically a big match between people that do Kendo and uh do Naginata. Um, and it says, I just watched this and it got me thinking, we have a lot of different Kamai that we use, mainly Chudan and Jordan, uh, which is to be expected because they work best against another Ito user. Um, but after I saw this video, I noticed that the Kendokas were standing in a kind of Gedan Kamai. Uh, I would like to disagree with Andy here that saying uh, and say that doing Ishuji Ai isn't only fun but thanks to it, we get to put other waza or the kamai that are not that useful against other kendoka uh, to use. Um, what do you think about my thoughts? Okay, great. Um, okay, so uh, this is because a couple of videos ago I talked about doing Ishii GI, which is when you do Kendall versus Naginato or something like that. And I said, I'm not really super into it. And it's really something that you do mainly for fun rather than to kind of improve your Kendall. Um, and I really like your post actually um, and your point you're making. Um, there's a couple of things I'd say is, yeah, of course, if you're against somebody doing Naginata, then it doesn't surprise me that they're doing, people are doing Gedan. Um, because they've got a really long stick and they're allowed to hit you in the in the legs. So, um, and if you watch that video, like, I don't know if all, but majority of the points that the Naginata people score are Sune, which is the, the strike to the shin, um, which is, like, not a target in Kendall. Um, so, like, it kind of feels a little bit unfair to me, this sort of thing. I, I feel like, because it's pretty much impossible to hit Kote on somebody using Naginata, so probably they shouldn't be allowed to hit Sune. Um, cause Kote is like a really major waza in Kendo and it seems like Sune is a major waza in Naginata. So if we can't hit the Kote really, uh, then they shouldn't really be able to hit the, hit the Sune. Um, I mean, I know it's not against the rules to hit the Kote, but I mean, you're not going to hit the Kote or someone doing Naginata. Um, but anyway, uh, that's a side point all in itself. Um, in terms of, uh... Right, so your point is, is that it's not just for fun, it can help our kendo for when we're not doing kendo against people also not doing kendo, is kind of the way I see that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when you do Naginata, you get to use stuff like Gedan or other Kamai, or maybe like some weird waza where you jump over the stick and, and hit hit them, which you would never do in kendo, because no one's going to hit you in the leg. Um, but... Like, that's kind of outside of Kendall, isn't it? <laughs> like, so yeah, it's yeah, it might be fun, but it, I still don't think that it's like conducive to uh, improving your Kendall ability because Kendall is when you do Kendall with somebody else that does Kendall. Um, 
And it's not that these guys aren't doing Kendall, they're doing Ishii GI. But yeah, okay, so it might improve your ability at Ishii GI. Um, but uh, like I say, it's which is something that I feel like is more for fun than for actual Im improvement in Kendall. <laughs> so, uh, like I say, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but I feel like what your point is, is that doing Ishii, Ishii, Ishii GI is good to help you get better at doing Ishii GI as opposed to being able to do better at other people that do Kendall, um, which I think is pretty natural. Uh, but cool, you know, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying it's, it's rubbish or something like that. I'm saying I'm not super interested in it, but if it's something you want to do, something you've got interested in, or you enjoy it, then go knock yourself out, enjoy it. Um, not literally though, don't literally knock yourself out or each other out, <laughs> that wouldn't be cool. Um, but yeah, just go and, go and have fun and do it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to kind of just double back on that. So sorry for stretching the episode out, um, but I, I, I did want to I did want to touch on that. Um, I did think it was a, a worthwhile uh, question. Okay, um, so right, that's enough for me today. Uh, it's been a really long episode today, <laughs> uh, but I have enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you have as well. Some great questions. Leave us some more down in the comments. That's what they're there for. Either on this video, um, if you're watching this on the Kendo Star blog, there's a comments thing down there. You can leave them on there, or you can go and leave them on YouTube, or you can go over to uh, the Kendo Star, uh, not the Kendo Star, the Kendo Show Early Access Group. Um, anything you post on there, I'll be able to see that too. And uh, Provided I don't forget it like I did with this Nagi Nata question, uh, I'll try and answer that in the next episode. Also, uh, like, share, subscribe, you know, all the stuff to do, social media, what have you, and uh, you need to uh, shop at Kendall Star, like that guy says. <laughs> okay, cool. See you next time. Thanks for watching.